On today's show, Daryl and I are talking about why boring practice works. Hey guys, welcome back to Strategic Baseball Podcast. Today, Daryl and I are going to talk about why boring practice works. So Jeff and Daryl here, we help baseball players get to the next level with a strategic advantage so that they can play with supreme confidence against the best players at any level. In every episode, we promise to deliver value on the strategic side of player development to help your players compete with players just as good, if not better than them. Remember, Daryl, the pitching strategist, I'm a hitting strategist, and this is Strategic Baseball Podcast. If you are interested in joining our inner circle, head over to strategic-baseball.com and submit your email to always get a reminder each time we release a new episode. If you are a player, a parent, or a coach who is interested in learning more about how the strategic advantage baseball process works for you and your unique situation, please email me at jeff at athletic-mission or Daryl at DC at startpitching.com. You can find those in the show notes. We would love to arrange a time to speak with you and see how we can help. All right, Daryl, I'm going to let you kick this off, man. We are talking today about why about why boring practice works. Well, I tell you what, man, I think after the last couple of shows where we really started digging deeper into like really why players struggle or at least that that concept of why they feel like they're struggling. And again, I think there's so much information out there today and there's so many coaches and specialists and and there's again, and a lot of it's good information. There's, you know, it's it's really not the information I think that is the problem of what they're struggling with. I think what we're seeing is the integration or how do I use that information? And then again, I think we see gener- generational divides between what you and I were talking about this other day, the the difference between what baseball fundamentals were 30 years ago versus today. And and when we start talking about fundamentals, you know, back in the day, we talked about building, throwing, running bases, all the little things that kind of made up the game of baseball. And and I think nowadays, as we ask people about questions and about what's going on, what are they doing and practicing, or why do they feel like they're struggling? I think a lot of it now is we're getting the feedback that it's a lack of measurables. And I think that's almost become like the new fundamentals. And then we do, we see coaches that are frustrated because they feel like these kids are, are really great athletes and a lot of them can throw hard and, and they do some of the, the traits that would make up a good baseball player, but they're lacking in the actual game day execution of uh, how do we use those skills? And so when they come to us and they're asking us like, hey, man, where do we even start at or how do we even identify what the problem is? Then I think it's one of those things that that you and I do here far as assessment wise is really we don't start with the measurables. We start like we talked about a few shows back. We start with where are they currently at? You know, really, what is their desire as a baseball player? And then, you know what, athletically, what does it take to be a good baseball player? And we kind of deconstruct that assessment process and work our way back to the athleticism and, and kind of the fundamental, you know, just baseball movements and, and stuff that we would say, how do we use our bodies? And then then try to tie it together with actual the game of baseball. And so I think, you know, as we titled today's show is, is Boring Practice – I think that's what it comes back to when we're really trying to lay that foundation of how we take individual players and give them a place to start, a place to feel comfortable with, you know, not just trying to understand the what we call the competitive advantage piece of baseball, your athleticism, your mechanics, your strength and conditioning program, your patterns, habits, and routines. There's where most of that that fundamental learning starts at. But once we got that base and how do we move into kind of the mastery piece or practicing until mastery, I think that window right there is where in the developmental world, a lot of players and parents 
are confused because there's so much information out there and and everybody's got their their magical way of of doing this and teaching mechanics or teaching pitches or or the swing or fill in the blank that we get so focused on just mastering like that one drill and we get really good at it we're good at teaching kids how to master drills but we're not very good at tell you, uh, of really helping them take the the baseball fundamentals as we used to know, which is actually about the game of baseball, and then developing those skills, developing the talent they have and the ability they have, and then being able to go actually turn that into baseball skills that they could use, you know, in a real baseball game. And so I think this conversation always gets lost because you know what, we got so many scouts and so many recruiters now that base their initial judgment, base that, it's kind of like that that first look or the eye test based on just pure measurables. And they really haven't seen the actual, how they play in a real baseball game. And so I think that disconnect, especially in the online world, is is creating a lot of confusion, a lot of like misunderstanding about what it takes. And it's like you and I always tell these kids, man, no matter what we're doing, if it don't give you a strategic advantage on game day, then we got to figure out what we're doing and why we're doing and whether we need to change something. And I think that's the conversation, man. I think it's starting to be had because we're seeing the difference between these really great athletes that are playing baseball than these really good athletes that are really good baseball players. And I think that that sometimes can feel like a fine line in the scouting world when we're evaluating, you know, high level players. But when we're in that development mode, when these kids are, you know, they might grow three inches and add 10 pounds every six months for the next two or three years. And you see that growth and you see that development, that baseline of what you and I call boring practice never changes. It's that fundamental, foundational, hey, here's how I continue to build skills within my athleticism. And then at the same time, you know, because these kids are playing yearly, it's not it's not like we're developing kids to play in the Olympics. So it's not something where we're doing three and a half, four years of training. We're doing some competitions. But at the end of the day, when the Olympic trials happen, that's that's the reality of what we've been doing the last three or four years. But I think what happens to these kids when we start talking about do they want to play college baseball or do they want to go on and maybe play pro baseball one day, especially to these kids that are in eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, you know, these 14, 15, 16 year old kids, they start feeling like that. They start feeling like, you know what, hey, today really don't matter. It's what happens three or four years from now. And I think, you know, not only do they miss that experience of of enjoying the game during their high school years or during that travel ball, select ball years, summer ball years. But I think we miss the developmental mindset of it that, yeah, man, we, we want to continue to grow and get better as a player, but you also want to enjoy the game, man, and go play right now. And so not getting so caught up in that long-term goal and really understanding how we develop players through this, you know, really competitive advantage, kind of getting the measurable, seeing where they're currently at and what they need to work on. And then how do we take that and really practice until mastery specific baseball skills that gives them the ability to go really create a strategy and play in a real game, man. That's what we're talking about, boring baseball and and boring practice. Because when you master the boring practice piece, the stuff that is the foundational stuff, then the unique training and development stuff that you do for your individual baseball skills, that's what gives kids the ability to see how it plays on game day, to compete and and to create a strategy versus a hitter or versus a pitcher and really get into that kind of chess match aspect of the game. And when they do, that's how we keep kids playing the game. And that's the cool part about what we're doing here at Athletic Mission because we've kind of flipped the script on our assessment process. And it's not that we downplay the measurables or how we can get those measurables. It's really now we've kind of put the emphasis on game day and how it shows up on game day and not so much about just the drill itself or this specific movement or or that one little key component that everybody 
on Twitter and, and in the baseball world is laser focused on or the scouts or the recruiters are focused on. And how do we really build that and develop that and continue to build that and develop it as these young players are developing emotionally and intellectually and, and physically, you know, maturing, then that piece of it is what is we're seeing here, man, that the kids are grasping, the guys are grasping it. And when they do, man, we can see that mindset shift happen that you and I talk about from that compare and convince mindset, trying to compare themselves to everybody else and convince themselves they're good enough to play to what we call that compete and contribute mindset now that it's really about how well I compete on game day and how do I help my team win. And I think when we see that mindset shift, then all of a sudden these little boring things that we do, the things that we just grind through that that does help us with our competitive advantage stuff. And then at the same time helps us practice until we master our our baseball skill set. And again, I want to reiterate mastery is not perfection. Mastery is something that I could go use in a, a real baseball game now, not five years from now, right now. So we can go play on the weekend or we can go play with our friends or or we can go play in high school, whatever it takes, whatever level you get that opportunity to play. And I think when we build that bridge and kids realize and players realize why we do that, then all of a sudden, Jeff, I think we're seeing that that boring practice isn't boring anymore when they're getting those game day results. Yeah, that's what I like about our process. We start on game day. What's happening and where are they currently at? And when we start with game day, now we have more clarity on why we need to do X, Y, Z and, and what the takeaway needs to be on X, Y, Z for it to show up on game day. And when we started taking this angle and this approach, while the, the boring practice on the surface may seem boring, the kids don't see it that way because what this is what this process and, and this understanding and this practice is gonna is what's gonna allow them to be the best that they can be now. Yep. And, and like I said, the kids, you know, they embrace it, they appreciate yep. it because since we work backward, they finally have the clarity and understanding on how this is going to transfer in games. Now, we tell the kids all the time, the lack of clarity killed understanding and lack of understanding killed, ma killed mastery. So we got to make sure that kids are understanding and, and they have clarity on what they're doing. And the best way to do it is to work, it's to work backwards in games. Yep. And, and, you know, let's say we did not conduct boring practice, yeah. yep. uh, working backwards like we do. Now you're going to start seeing kids that are just really confused and, and there's going to be mindless work with, with no takeaway. And, and when, when you have mindless work with no takeaway, now you can actually get worse. And that's not what we want. You know, so, uh, yep. and, and you know what? A lot of people start there. And, you know, again, the kids yep. need understanding and they need clarity on how what they are doing and what you're having them do, how they're going to use the game. Absolutely. Because, you know, like I said, we take the exact opposite approach. And our guys here at Athletic Mission have, they have a purpose and focus yep. every single day. Understanding, you know, how important everything that they're doing and, and, and being present and, and having that takeaway that is unique for them. You know, we don't do a ton of drills here at Athletic Mission, but we do have our core yeah, ones. Yep. And everyone has their own takeaway based on where they're at and, and what they're trying to accomplish. You know, everyone's cues are different. So for like for like yep. our hitting process, our, our stick process, stick, you know, the first S is going to be C and spin. The T is timing. The K is knowledge of the zone. And then the S is, is swing. So the stick process that we yeah. use for hitting versus swing, you know, different guys have different process yep. for how they get their eyes to the release window. So we work on that process constantly, no swinging, just working our process over and over and over of moving our eyes to the release window. Boring, yes, but valuable for game day. And the kids embraced it because 
they see the ball really early, they see the ball well, and they see it for a very long time, which is going to set up their timing, which is going to set up whether this ball is in their zone and eventually putting off a good swing. And then the, the next piece, you know, we have, we have, you know, part of our boring practice and how we make it better and how we uh, get guys more clarity and understanding is the post game evaluation. Um, when we can really have a conversation, guys, and really, and really analyze and really have a, 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 an understanding of what really happened in their game, whether it was good or bad. You know, it allows us to break down what they were thinking, what they were seeing, and, and maybe what they could have done differently, which is going to set up our practice focus for the next week. So, Daryl, man, I, I love our process and, and how we work backwards. Yeah, and what's cool about it, Jeff, is I, I think we're seeing it as we've been tracking it over the last few months. We're seeing the guys as measurables get better. Absolutely. So w- without us having to go hyper-focus on it, so actually developing the baseball skill set, developing what's going to play or what's going to translate in a real baseball game is really making a difference in the measurable. And I think a lot of times when we focus so much on measurables, and, and this is probably the biggest question I get in my consulting piece business, is when why can they throw this well in a bullpen and not take it to a real game? But but when we practice just getting that measurable, when we practice just mastering that piece, but we haven't mastered the strategy side of it or how I would use it in a real baseball game. See, we got to we got to differentiate the difference between being physically capable and then how does it play in a real baseball game as a strategic advantage against a hitter or against a pitcher. And I think when we get them to see that strategic advantage mindset piece of it, like, hey, this is really about training to be to go play in a real baseball game, then we see that that aha moment happen. We see the kids finally like, yeah, man, it ain't about my velocity. It's about my velocity that I can use with this pitch by movement to a location in a real baseball game against a hitter that is on purpose, that I, I'm strategically throwing this pitch with this velocity movement to a location on purpose. And I think just that piece of it, man, and I know you've been doing some great things on the hitting side of it, that they're grasping it, man, over these last few months as we've kind of dissected this and, and reconstructed how we do the assessment process. And, man, we're seeing a legit difference, man, and it's cool. It's cool. To, it's fun to watch. Yeah, you know, like you said, the, the measurables showing up, you know, the measurables are great and, but we need it to play, which called for a need to understand how we produce the number. Right. So again, for us on the hitting side, we have that thick process. If I can see spin and I'm on time, I get a good pitch to hit. I know I, I'm likely going to be able to put off my A swing. Absolutely. And because of that whole process there, now I understand how to produce the number. And that's the process that I need to follow in games. So a lot of times when things go wrong, it's more about what you're not doing. And so yep. when you have a process, now you can easily diagnose. And so this is a, this is the mindset piece, man, and, and, and understanding the how-to. What? Yep. You know, we got to teach kids the how-to. Um so that it shows up on game day. And then, and then the other thing is that it allowed it to be hyper-focused in, in the boring practice. And we need that so we can get to mastering strategy. Yep. And that and that's the takeaway I want them to have from today's show is that, hey, man, we're not doing drills just to master a drill. That it's got to specifically tie to a baseball skill that – I'm going to be able to to build on and and really master so I can use it in a real baseball game. And I think when we make that when we tie that together, then the little things that coaches are trying to get these guys to do, if we can explain to them how it's going to help them master this baseball skill, whether it's seeing the ball better, being on time better, knowing your zone for pitchers, it's about how do I command my max velocity pitches? How do I recreate that that movement pattern so it becomes a subconscious thing that I just automatically do? And so when I'm on the mound in a real game, I'm focused on strategy, not physical capability. 
And, and I think once we see that piece happening, Jeff, that's cool, man. So again, boring practice is only boring if there isn't really any purpose behind it. And there isn't a takeaway that these guys can tie back to, to helping them be successful on game day. Yeah, that's perfect, man. That's going to be my takeaway as well. So thank you guys for listening in. If you guys are finding any value in these episodes, please head over to strategic-baseball.com, join our circle, leave us an objective review, um, and we will catch you guys in the next episode next week. Mm-hmm.